Hi everyone, this is Andrea from Verbling.com and this is an English class all about mentally strong people and habits that they do not have, things that mentally strong people do not do. Um, sorry about the late start, I cleared my browsing history on my computer and then I did not know I was logged out of Verbling so the Verbling class did not start because I was not logged in. Uh, so little weird computer problem, but now it's okay, so I see I have some viewers. If you are watching this video on YouTube, this is through Verbling.com. If you want to join my English classes, if you're interested in them, uh, that is where you go. You have to go to Verbling.com. You have to make an account. You have to select a subscription. There are different kinds of subscriptions, ways to pay, um, how much you pay, depends on how many classes you want to take in a month. So you can do that, um, and so if you're looking at me at this video on YouTube and you're thinking, who is this lady, what is she doing, how can I join these classes, you have to go to verbling.com to do that, and um, that's how you join my classes. Hi, Ali. Uh, hi, Andre. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Uh, I'm uh, well, thank you. Are you at work? Yes, uh, I'm at work. <laughs> Uh, I was working uh, and uh, take a break for your classes. Uh, okay. No, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I have to uh, live uh, in uh, next uh, hours, uh, next minutes. Okay, uh, in the next uh, few minutes. Uh, it uh, depends uh, if uh, someone. Uh, Come to my office or call <laughs> okay. me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry for from now. Okay. okay, that's all right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just let me know. You can if you have to leave really fast and we see you disappear, then we know why. It's because you have a client in your office, or you can you can just write us a write a note in the chat as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Welcome back to class, Michael. Hi, Andrea. Hi, nice to have you back for Thank round you. two. A good class was uh, about uh, lateral thinking, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. That's a fun class. You know what you should do? Uh, what? When you um, prepare these uh, stories, you shouldn't like uh, take and copy paste, but you should like uh, change all the worlds. Ah, like, yeah, reword. Yeah, the problem is that there are a lot of different websites that have those kinds of um, problems on them. So sometimes, even if I reword it, sometimes it might catch like a phrase of it or keywords too. But not only that. For example, you uh, like um, that. Uh, uh, he watched a movie in the cinematograph was like uh, I think the first story. You should yeah. like uh, he watched uh, a movie. Uh, at his home, like at his TV, or something like that. Ah, okay. Like change, uh, change the, the setting. Yeah, the set, all kinds of things. Because ah. it's very easy uh, to find this. Okay. Place. Okay. Yeah, I could do that. Then I can prevent some googling. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Okay. Next time. All right. Welcome back, Alberto. Hello. Nice to see you again. You're in round mm -hmm. two of English with me. Uh-huh. And let's also say hi to Yuki. Hello. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. How are you doing today, Yuki? Um, well, thank you. Good. Good to see you. All right. Good so um, today we'll be looking at an article from Forbes.com and we'll be talking about, um, usually we'll be talking, uh, blah, sorry, we'll, we'll, we will be talking about mentally strong people, people that have a lot of mental strength and mostly uh, most of the cases that we'll talk about here are in a professional context so this is a little bit business English but also general English as well talking about qualities of people uh, characteristics of successful people so the title of the article that we will read and discuss together is called um, habits uh, things that mentally strong people don't do or behaviors that mentally strong people avoid. But before we get into talking about those specific behaviors, first let's just talk about mental strength. What does it mean to be mentally strong? Are you mentally strong? Have you changed in um, the, your levels of strength as you get older? 
things like that. Think more. Think mostly with work, but you can also think about this in your personal life. Um, let's start with Yuki. Yuki, what is your idea of being mentally strong or having mental strength? Go to Japanese temple and uh, and sitting uh, sit 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 in in proper pose in Japanese proper pose and. Uh, have a mental training in temple, in, in Japanese temple, <laughs> Japanese Zen temple. Oh, okay, okay. It's like Zen training. Zen training. If okay. You, if your body will move, uh, you have punished. You, oh. If you, uh, if you move, uh, you will be punished. Okay. With, uh, with a special, with a special bar. Uh, he, uh, you are hit. You, you are you are hit by by another monks. By, by mm, mm. the other monks hit you with something. Yes. Uh, uh, yes okay. If you move, if you move another, uh, if you move the the monk, the monk uh, hit you. I see. So you have to be perfectly still all the yes. time. Uh huh. Yes. That would require a lot of mental strength and concentration. Yes, Definitely. It, it, will, it will be quite a severe training. Yeah, that's very severe training. Yes. Have you ever done that kind of training in Japan? Uh, sorry? Have you done that kind of training before? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm too weak to... I can't, maybe I, 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 can't, I can't endure such a, such a strong uh, training because I, I am too weak. Okay. So, <laughs> okay, so what what kind of people do that kind of training? Is it uh, like religious or Zen with the monks, or do they do? Sorry, you are voice. Um, oh, sorry. Cutting. So yes. My voice cut out. Yes. Yeah. Um, my question was, what kind of people do that kind of training? Like I monks think uh, <laughs> maybe uh, only. Only a people who 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 are strong mentally. Okay, can, only people can have a training. Okay. So and maybe it is it is meaningless maybe. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you are you are strong mentally, you you can you can have a training. Okay, so you you people that are already mentally strong do the training to become mentally strong. So but it's, it's a joke. Uh, many people say say that it it's a very expensive, uh, very Sorry, it's a very uh, precious experience okay. uh, to uh, uh, to go to the temple uh, and have a training. Okay, okay. Yes. So uh, maybe f in the future I'll try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, mental mental strength to stay still or to really concentrate on something yes. definitely takes a lot of mental strength and for yes. yeah. You mentally you would have people. a mental men, mental calm uh, if you if uh, if you if you sit down um, silently calmly and they say that if you sit sit down uh, calmly uh, uh, um, you you will ha you will you will have a mentally Mentally mm, mm, happiness. Um, okay, you gain okay. happiness and Zen. Enlightenment, okay. maybe. Enlightenment, you, yeah. You yeah. will have a men, a men, mental enlightenment. Okay, you could just say an enlightenment. enlightenment. Um, you don't have to put mental in front of it. Just you, you have an, an enlightenment, or you, you become enlightened. Ah, you will have a satisfaction mentally. Yeah, you can be. Me you could say you will. You can. Let me type that. You can um, become mentally satisfied. Yes, I'm mentally satisfied. Yeah, mentally satisfied. Okay, interesting. I should look into this this training that you're talking about. Uh huh. Hi, Carmen. Uh, good morning, Andrea. Good morning, everybody. Hi, nice to see you. And nice to see you too. We are just talking about uh, what we think mental strength is. What, what, in your opinion, in your own 
definition of um, mental strength, what, what would that be? And also, ta we're we talking about if we think that we are mentally strong before we read our article. Okay, because I was just wondering what this club was all about. Yeah, I didn't we're, know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> the main part of the class will be reading an article about um, things that mentally strong people don't do or habits that mentally strong people avoid. But now we're just talking about the concept of being mentally strong. Okay, then. Okay, uh, Michael, tell me about your own definition of being mentally strong. And are you mentally strong? Do you consider yourself to be a mentally strong person? Mentally strong, uh, it's a collection of attributes that allow a person to perceive, persevere through difficult circumstances. And do you Google that? And emerge without losing confidence. Okay. <laughs> do you like that? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Can you put it in your own words and not just Google? Yeah, exactly what he <laughs> says. That, uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, you, you have a set of qualities that uh, helps you to, I don't know, to, to live, to survive in a difficult, uh, difficult time. Mm -hmm. Are you a mentally strong person? Or do you wow. consider yourself to be a mentally strong uh, person? What is the opposite of mentally strong? Mentally weak? Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm a mentally weak person. Oh, okay. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't know. Just to be, to oppose the the main point of the class. I mean, uh, okay. other people will say I'm mentally strong. I, sure. But I say I'm mentally weak from the beginning. Okay. All right. Yeah. Different. Okay. <laughs> to defer. <laughs> Sure. Uh, yeah. So the the opposite of strong will be weak, and you can have a mentally weak person. So what what would a mentally weak person be like? Mm, cannot cope with the difficult times. It's always uh, uh, he or she is always like uh, complaining about uh, that is bad, that thing that happened to me. This is karma. That is karma. That is uh, not my luck. I'm not lucky. And uh, I cannot find a job. Uh, on my job, they pay uh, a low salary. Uh, I will not achieve anything in my life. I am all going to die. So it's very negative. Kind of, yeah, uh, it's too mentally weak. What's what karma? Do. You mentioned karma. Can you tell us what that is? It's like, uh, I think I'm not really into these things, but uh, uh, it's something that, uh, so you, you, do not choose in your life, but it's all for you chosen. So you live your life by, or no, 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 this is not karma. Mm, I think I think you're talking about fate. Fate is yeah, when it's... you think like you you don't have control over your life. Karma is more the idea that if you do something good, then ah, good yeah, things yeah. will happen to you. If you do something bad, bad things will happen to you. Yeah. So you did yeah. something bad, and your life will be punished for that. Yeah, 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 that's karma. Yeah, so some people, maybe they have done something bad. Karma, that's why bad things happen to them all the time. Yeah, so some people are really into karma, and that's the idea of that. Okay, uh, Carmen, do you consider yourself to be a mentally strong person, or do you know anyone that you can you think is especially mentally strong? I don't know. I think uh, it's like... You need to be really in, in, in need of that. I mean, if you go through a bad experience or something, then you realize if you're strong or you're weak. But I've got this tendency to cry, cry a lot. <laughs> so I don't know, it hasn't got anything to do with being uh, strong, men mentally strong uh -huh. or, so weak, or, or mentally weak. But um, I don't know. I haven't gone through any very, any strong experience just to just to state if I'm weak or if I'm, if I'm strong. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's some that's an interesting point that you bring up about crying. Like sometimes there's some ideas, um, usually with men in a lot of countries, like men shouldn't cry. If you cry it's a sign of weakness. That's mm -hmm. um not not such a strong idea with women. Um, sometimes women are just expected to cry and it's supposed <laughs> to be normal for us to do that. Um, I don't really consider crying to be a sign of mental weakness, though. 
Neither do I. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's just that's an emotion. That's how you react to something. That's some, mm -hmm. It's um, what you do when you're feeling something. But what you do might reflect mental strength. So maybe you're very stressed out. You're in a bad situation. You cry about it, but you still do things um, that maybe you're afraid to do, or you do things that make you uncomfortable to get out of that situation. Oh, not really, Andrea. The problem with me is I cry for everything. It's not a bad situation. Even happy oh, okay. to cry too. If you, for okay. instance, you had a baby and you're telling me about the uh -huh. how uh, when you went in labor, you know, I would cry. I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> if I see someone okay. crying, you know, I would cry too. So it's just uh, I'm just like that. I don't okay. know how to. I can't help it. Okay, crying is very <laughs> contagious for you. You see some. You have. You see some strong something yeah. that's emotionally very that's it. powerful. Yeah, it, it hasn't got to be a bad situation. It can't be a happy situation. You know, both. Okay. <laughs> I don't really mind. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I can be like that too. Not all the mm -hmm. time, but there's some times in my life where I was like, where just anything I could just <laughs> just cry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, Ali, uh, what are your thoughts about mental strength and do you consider yourself to be a mentally strong person? Uh, maybe, uh, not uh, uh, very strong maybe, but uh, I uh, can say in, in the middle, <laughs> I think. Kind of in the middle, maybe not weak, but not, not on the other side with strong. Yes. Uh, uh, I uh, uh, motivate uh, something uh, 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 I have to do or I would like to do and uh, uh, I uh, like to uh, something uh, uh, I do, I uh, work hard and uh, be patient about that uh, 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 till uh, I uh, end, uh, end it, it, maybe. Okay, yeah, working hard through a situation until you reach a, a certain goal or you yeah. make an improvement. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yes, sometimes mentally strong people have to work hard even if something is very difficult. They have to keep working. Good. And finally, we're at Alberto. Any other thoughts about mental strength? And do you consider yourself to be mentally strong? No, I'm not uh, mentally strong. Definitely. No. Because uh, I have uh, dark ideas. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Every day. Okay. Dark What's, ideas can you give us me? an example <laughs> of one of your dark ideas? <laughs> what do you mean, dark ideas? Yeah, what do you mean? Yeah, if, it were, if I were mentally strong, I'd... Uh, uh, not have uh, these ideas. Yeah? Uh, I, I think it's a kind of optimist and pessimism. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's like that. And uh, I think uh, optimism people uh, is uh, mentally strong and uh, pessimism. Optimistic is, people. Optim optimistic, yeah. So mm -hmm. optimistic, optimistic people and pessimistic. Oh. Yeah. That's the difference. Okay, yeah, Keep keeping positive thoughts no matter what, even if the situation is not good. Okay, there is a, we will talk a little bit more about pessimism versus pessimism versus optimism in our article. So there's a little bit of initial thoughts about mentally strong people, and now we're going to look at what, what they don't do. We talked a little bit, some of you gave some examples of things that people might do if they're mentally strong, working hard throughout difficulties, staying optimistic. Now we're going to look at things to avoid, and the article is coming in the chat box. So we will read each point. We have um, 13 different things. I hope we can get through most of them today. Um, but we'll read a point, we'll read one of the, the behaviors, and then we'll talk about different examples of it, and we'll discuss further. So we'll read and discuss. So let's um, get my screen going, just a second. Yes, and I will also make this bigger. Okay. Is this big enough for you guys? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it's perfect. Okay, good. So we'll start. We'll start um, with Alberto, and let's have you read 
the first, um, yeah, well, this, I wonder, can I, just a second, I think I can make it so that we can see more text. Yes, yeah, then we don't. Yeah, make it smaller. Yeah, it's a little better. Yeah, okay, so let's go, Alberto, with the, there's so many little extra things on this, can I, no. Ah. Is that Dutch, Andrea? Yeah. There's like some Dutch. That? Okay. Yeah, my computer is in Dutch. So oh, okay. <laughs> because that that forces me to read in Dutch and solve problems in Dutch. Okay then. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh. So, Alberto, just read this first paragraph here. You we can't read okay, see all of it because this little thing here. Go ahead. Yeah. Mentally strong people. The 15 things they avoid. Editor's note. Following the huge popularity of these posts. Article search, I mean, Moin has authored a December the 3rd guest post on exercises to increase mental strength here. Sherry Connor has also interviewed uh, Amy Moin in a Forbes video chat that spans on this article here. Okay, so that's just some links that you can go to if you want more information about this. And um, the article will start after this paragraph, so can you do the next one, Alberto, too? Yes. For all the time, executives spend concerned about physical strength and health. When it comes down to, to it, mental strength can mean even more. Particularly for entrepreneurs, numerous, artic numerous articles talk about critical characteristics of mental strength. Tenacity, weight, optimism, and uh, an unfaithful Ability Unfailing. Uh, unfailing ability, as Forbes contributor David Williams says, to fail up. Okay, so we're talking about some characteristics of people that have mental strength or mentally strong people. Um, we have some good vocabulary words for you guys here. Tenacity is a noun, and it comes from the adjective tenacious. Has anyone heard that word before? Tenacity or tenacious? Mm -hmm. No. It's like mm -hmm. a stubborn. You want to do something, you keep on just uh, uh, trying to do it. You don't give yeah. up. Uh -huh, yeah, not giving up. You keep doing something no matter what. Now, go it on is. Doing. Yeah, you keep. Yeah, you go on with something. Uh huh. Uh huh. You, uh, you, the main thing is that you don't give up with something. So if you're tenacious, um, you are Come holding on, on to yeah. to a goal, even if circumstances are not good. It is um, similar to the word stubborn, like you mentioned. Stubborn is going to be more of a negative word. Mm -hmm. Oh, he he's so he's so difficult in an argument because he's so stubborn. Like he's like even, narrow minded. Yeah, stub. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And if you're stubborn, you you keep. You keep your ideas and your mindset, and you keep mm -hmm. doing something, even though there are better ideas, or even if that's not the best way for you yeah. to do things. You want to change your mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And ten tenacious people, it's more like you. It's uh, more like you keep working at something, and you never give up. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, Ali, are you a tenacious person? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I uh, uh, thought about now the, you have uh, a new word to describe yourself. Tenacious. Uh, yeah, I learned a new word about. Yes. <laughs> yes. Good. <laughs> good. All right. Good. The next one. This is in quotation marks, um, mostly because it's it has um, some multiple meanings, and this is a very kind of a slang word here. Grit. Um, if something is gritty. Adjective form of that is gritty. Um, gritty grit or things that are gritty is something that is um, physical, like dirt. Um, for example, you go to the beach and you are having fun on the beach. Maybe you are you don't have shoes on. You have bare feet on the beach. You have all the sand. You put your sh your shoes back on your feet, and the sand you feel the sand in the, your shoes, on your feet, and it's very grainy and dirty, and so that's gritty. So gritty is kind of like uh, physically something that is gritty. It's kind of grainy, like sand, also dirty. It has grit. It's kind of like 
they're they um they're really determined to do something. They're very tough, very strong, and usually that is talking about mentally. They're they're mentally very tough. They um they are not weak. They're very strong. So someone can have grit. You could say um, he works so hard and um, doesn't care about what people think because he works so hard. He has grit. There's a movie, the title of the movie is called True Grit. I've never seen it before, but maybe you've heard about it. Um, I'm not sure what that movie's about. But I think, I, when I think about the idea of like a movie called True Grit, I think about really, really tough guys, really strong guys. They're not afraid of things. Okay, uh, does, does that make sense to maybe, say that someone has grit? Maybe courage? Courage, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Courage, bravery, grit. Uh huh. Uh, Andrea, but grit has uh, a negative connotation too. It's a positive one. Usually, it's going to be with a positive one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would not say like, oh, he doesn't have grit. Maybe you you could say like, he doesn't have so much grit. Like mm -hmm. he he always he always gives up and he doesn't work very hard and he's always worried about what other people think. He does not have so much grit. But usually we'll use this one positively. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, good. So tenacity, grit, things about working hard, not giving up. Optimism, we talked a little bit about that already. So thinking positively no matter what. And an unfailing ability to fail up. So this is, a, the, we've got a little bit of a phrasal verb here, fail up. But this is a phrasal verb that is becoming more popular um, nowadays, usually with business English. Has anyone heard that before? No. Hmm. No, I haven't. No. But I to actually... Fail, to fail when you, is, is the opposite of succeed. Nothing got anything to do with that? It has to do with failing, yeah. So fail mm -hmm. opposite of succeed, but the word up in there changes it a little bit. I actually learned this one recently. Um, so I think it's one of those kind of buzzwords that is getting more popular in business. And to fail up means you do fail, you don't succeed at something, but you don't get hurt in the long run. Like um, maybe you fail up by losing a job, but because you lost your job, you get another job. You you have that opportunity. Ah, okay. Yeah. You so like it's, you get something good out of it. Yeah. Uh huh. You mm -hmm. fail, but there's still something good that happens to you. Mm -hmm. So you're something definitely happens that is definitely not successful. It's definitely a failure, but through that, because of that failure, uh, maybe you get experience from that failure, and you're able to keep going. And you in your overall big picture career, it does not hurt you. It okay, maybe okay. helps mm -hmm. helps you along. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the long way. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe somebody that has grit, someone who is tenacious, they never give up at their job. Even if they fail, it does not hurt them because they're so strong and they're so um, they're so optimistic. They have a good attitude. Yeah. So that's this is kind of a newer to me. It's new to me. This term fail up. Okay, uh, let's go to the next paragraph, and we'll have Ali read that one, starting with however. Okay. However, we can also define mental strength by identifying the things mentally strong individuals want to. Over the weekend, uh, I was impressed by this list compiled by Amy Morin, a psychotherapist and licensed clinical social worker that uh, she shared in Life Health. <coughs> it impressed me <coughs> enough. Uh, I'd also like to share her list here <coughs> along with my thoughts uh, on how each of these items is particularly applicable to in Entrepreneurs. 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 Uh huh. And then this is this word is applicable. Uh, applicable. Uh huh. Yes. So 
these these things are applicable. You can apply them to entrepreneurs. They all um, they're all connected to things that entrepreneurs need to be thinking about. Okay, so um, this is uh, somebody who works in the field of psychology. They're a psychotherapist, also a social worker, somebody that works with um, people to help to, uh, social workers help people get jobs. They also help people with um, difficult family situations, difficult financial situations. And so she has she works with a lot of different kinds of people. She's always helping people. She has a background in psychology. So she's made this list of all the things that successful, mentally strong people do not ever do. So let's look at number one and we'll have Carmen read number one. Waste time feeling sorry for themselves. Okay. Uh, waste time feeling sorry for themselves. Uh, you don't see mentally strong people feeling sorry for their circumstances. So dwelling, uh, how do you pronounce this word? Dwelling. Uh, dwelling on the way they've been mistreated. Uh, they have learned to take responsibility for their actions and outcomes. And they have an in inherent understanding of the fact that frequently life is not fair. They are able to emerge from trying circumstances with self-awareness and gratitude, awareness, self-awareness and gratitude for the lessons learned. When a situation turns out badly, they respond with phrases such as, oh well, or, or perhaps simply next. Okay, thank you. So uh, this, this word here is self-awareness. Here, uh, how we pronounce that, self-awareness. Uh -huh. Okay, you. so so uh, in a nutshell, mentally strong people, if something bad happens to them, they don't sit and feel bad about it. They just move on with their lives. That's a good expression that we use a lot in English, too. Uh, something bad happens, you move on with your life. We also just use the term move on as well. And that just means something happens, it's not so good, but you don't sit around and think about it for too long. So they don't feel sorry for the, for their circumstances, their situations. They don't dwell on the way they've been mistreated. Um, dwell has a bunch of different meanings. If you mm -hmm. dwell somewhere, it could be another word for to live somewhere. A dwelling mm -hmm. for uh, is a noun, can be like your house. Not so common, but if you say it, people will understand you. So a dwelling is like your house or your home. Welcome to my humble dwelling. <laughs> you might hear people say that too. You live in a small house. I have a very humble dwelling. But is it, but, is it, a, is it a little bit old fashioned now? Yeah. Uh huh. Now we just say house or home. But if you may see, you may read it in literature. Um, but we people understand it though. It's not like it's old English and and people don't use it at all. But mm -hmm. it's less, a little bit less common. Mm -hmm. So dwelling is a house. Um, to dwell can be to live somewhere, but in this case, this is a different meaning. This is to dwell is kind of they're not um, they they don't just uh, stay thinking about how they've been mistreated. They're not dwelling on it. So if you dwell on something, that means you think about something. Probably mostly that indicates that you're thinking about something for too long. So to dwell mm -hmm. on something is to to think about something for too long. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So dwell on, and we always use the preposition on with it. I'm I'm always I keep dwelling on the fight that we had last week. I need to we need to talk about it because I keep thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Usually you dwell on something that's bad. You dwell on something bad that happened. Dwell on a fight dwell on an argument. Here you're dwelling on the way that you've been mistreated, how somebody has treated you poorly. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, good. And um, they've learned to take responsibility. They have an inherent, an inherent understanding means that it's very internal. Like they, they know it, it's kind of almost like an instinct. Mm -hmm. It's part of their, who they are. They know that life is not fair. This is a very common expression that we use as well. <laughs> Somebody might complain 
oh, I can't believe this happened to me. I'm so angry. And you, your response could be, well, life is not fair. Too bad. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Good. Can anyone think of an example of somebody who does not waste time feeling sorry for themselves? Maybe somebody that you know that you can tell a story about or a famous person? Yes. Okay, uh, I read an article about this famous person just yesterday. So, Jordan uh, Belfort, uh, who have ever heard about him from the class? I, no, I haven't. Who, who no. is he? So, he's a former stockbroker from Wall Street. And he was <laughs> very, very, very young. Um, <laughs> what? No, no, he just said something. So it was just, sorry, go ahead. I'm just he, So he's a former stockbroker, and he um, made a, a, a lot of money, but uh, some kind of scheme ways. Like he basically he stole uh, stole money from his clients, uh, his uh, customers' clients. Mm -hmm. So and uh, um, and uh, uh, scam. Wait, mm -hmm. how do you say in the in scam he's way? A, he's a mm -hmm. scam artist, or he scammed people. Yeah, he scammed in the past. Mm -hmm. And after that, he was um, charged, uh, sh charged by authorities, uh, United States authorities. And uh, they gave uh, him like four years in prison to stay. Only four years. But this is a okay, movie so made, uh, made by DiCaprio. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Arthur, and he oh. stayed in prison two years yeah. only, only yeah. two years, and uh, uh, yeah. it's uh, now he's uh, he, and he wrote a book, and uh, based on this book they uh, they filmed this movie, uh, The Wolf of Wall Street. Okay. And, and like nowadays, nowadays what he does, he. Uh, he's a public speaker, speaker person. Uh, mm. He's invited by uh, different companies, and he, uh, for example, he gave a speech in Fort, uh, so in Texas, Fort Lord, I think. Fort, uh, Fort Worth. Yeah, yeah, and it's in that city for thirty thousand dollars one hour. Oh, so that's for not one bad. hour of his speech, he gained thirty thousand uh, dollars. And but. Uh, uh, a part of his money uh, he should pay to his uh, like uh, victims or yeah. he's rich <laughs> now from, and he said like uh, he said like his quote I, I will quote him uh, he said like you do not you shouldn't judge a person by his uh, past failures and past uh, uh, bad things that he does because uh, it's not part of me and uh, what I did uh, like before uh, I'm uh, all good what I uh, learned from past, something like that. But okay. all bad I do not hold with me. Okay, so he he leaves the past in the past. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> this is for for me was like very impressive to uh, to read about uh, this kind of man. I mean, uh, to to be charged uh, this kind of things, and after that to give speeches for thirty thousand dollars per hour. Yeah, um, I would love to make thirty thousand dollars in one hour. hour. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> yeah, so he he had some think bad things happen to him, but he left the past in the past. I have not seen that movie. Has anyone seen that movie? Not the yet. Wall Street. No. But I don't want to see it. You don't want to see it? <laughs> no, no, I don't want it. I um, I prepared, so I will look. Oh, up in the, okay. In the next few days, in English, by the way. I... Okay, good, good. Mikey, can you just write down the the the, the name of that person? Because Jordan's what? I get it. In, I didn't get it. Can okay, you write it down, please? One second. Yes, if you want, I've heard this movie has, I think, like, three hundred times they say the f word. A bad word in that movie is supposed to have very bad language. Okay. Yeah, so that's that's definitely an example of someone who did not waste time feeling sorry for himself. All right. Uh, while he's doing that, let's go to number two, and let's have... Um, Yuki, can you read that one? Okay. Give away their power. Mentally strong people avoid giving others a power to make them feel inferior or bad. They understand they are in, co in control of their actions and emotions. 
the you no know, their strengths is the in in their ability to manage the way they respond. Okay, thank you. So when you give away your power to someone else, that means you allow someone else to make you feel a certain way or to make to allow someone else to be superior um, superior over you or to have superiority over you. So uh, you are always in control if you're mentally strong. You're in control of what you do. You're in control of what you how you feel and um, the way that you respond, the way you react, you're definitely in control of that too. Now with this one I'm not. I don't have a psychology background, um, but I do have to think a lot about psychology in teaching, and um, I think this is really interesting. It says they're in they're in control of their actions and emotions. Um, sometimes things happen to me, and I feel like I can't control how I feel about them at all. I know I can control how I respond to them, but I'm not quite sure about the idea that you can always control your emotions. What do you guys think about that? Can you control your emotions at all times? I think it's difficult with uh, the age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's more difficult for me uh, to control my emotions uh, now than uh, 10 years ago. OK. OK. I if I uh, read uh, something, uh, that is uh, special or that is uh, especially, uh, I don't know, worse, uh, is uh, affects me uh, more than uh, years ago. Okay, okay. It, it, things affect you more now than years yes. ago? Yeah. Yes. I'm no, old. <laughs> 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 No, I, and I think that happens to me too. I, I've got to admit that I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit softy, and <laughs> so <laughs> I just see my, my emotions run flow that way. So I need, I, I need, I know I got to, I need to control my emotions, but uh, I think I, I just can help it. Yeah, I think. But your, I think but the, your body emotions, uh, Carmen. I mean, uh, crying. No, walking. I won't kill you. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I can control case, that. In my case, I can't uh, control uh, my bad emotions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Come I can't be. I can make a fool of myself. No, no. <laughs> if, <laughs> if you, if you love um, <laughs> at uh, everything is public. Yeah. <laughs> I just go <laughs> to the <laughs> end of it. <laughs> yeah. Stop. Okay. Okay, Ali, were you about to say something? Uh, yeah, I can say uh, I uh, can uh, control my emotions and uh, my acting. It's not How you uh, act? Yeah. Uh, uh, I I can't uh, I can control myself. Uh, I, I think. Okay, you've got a lot of strength there, being able to control all of that. Carmen, I'm muting you because you've got some background noise. Um, yeah, I think the key here, like, what the only thing that I'm not sure about in this point is the idea of controlling your emotions, but definitely people can control how they react, how they, how they act, what they do, but I'm not quite sure if we can always control how we feel about things. That, that's, one, I'm, that's one part of this article where I'm like, I don't know. But again, I'm not a psychologist. I don't have a psychology background. I have not taken, I have taken psychology classes, but not in depth. So um, yeah, I'm not sure. Yuki, what do you think? Can we control our emotions? Or is it more about how we react? Mm, uh, not only me, uh, for, for many people, um, uh, it, it is quite difficult to control emotions, and uh, there is uh, no description about how to how to train <laughs> uh, how to train in order to control of your, your emotions. So that's a point. 
So maybe you mm -hmm. have to go to Japanese temple and you, <laughs> you have to, be <laughs> to be strong and control your emotion. Yeah, you could become a Zen master. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Michael, what do you think? About um, to control emotions? Yeah. Sure, it can be uh, more like uh, not so emo emotional. You can um, you can be like above uh, the emotions. You just uh, need to want very very much that, and to read some books that would help you. Mhm. Mm yeah. There's well, yeah self help books. Yeah, and you're talking about going above. You could you could say that you rise above yeah. the emotions. Mhm. Mm Okay. Yeah, because you can like uh, every day be emotional, you to like uh, to be anxious about something, but you can be uh, a little bit not so emotional about uh, this kind of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe it's a it's a choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you have to you do have you would have to do some some mental training to really get to that point, I think. For sure. <laughs> sure. Okay. All right. So, but basically, the idea of, I was just wanted to you guys' opinion on that because I was thinking that was interesting talking about controlling emotions but the main idea of number two is that you don't let another person control your emotions or control your actions. No one makes you do something or no one makes you feel a certain way. Let's look at number three and let's have Michael read that one. Number three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think uh, you need to skip me because uh, my Google Hangout is. Uh, oh, okay. I'll re be right back. Okay, let's go back to Alberto, and I'll have you read number three. Yeah. Shy away from change. Mentally strong people embrace change, and they welcome challenge. Their biggest fear, if they have one, is not of the unknown but of becoming complacent and stagnant. An environment of change and even certainly can energize the mentally strong people and bring out the best. Okay, good. So this, this word here is complacent. That's how we pronounce that one. Has anyone heard that word before? Complacent? Content, yeah? Maybe. Yeah, it, yeah it has to do with being content. Happy. Feeling, feeling, yes, feeling happy, feeling pre uh -huh. present. Yeah, feeling satisfied with yourself. Uh huh. Complacent is um, has a little bit of a different meaning than just content. You definitely are content if you're complacent, but um, the the thing that complacent implies is that you are content, and because you are so content and you're satisfied with yourself, because of that, you don't feel like you need to do anything else. You don't feel like you need to. Um, improve yourself. So if you're complacent, you're happy, you're satisfied, but it kind of has a meaning of you really don't feel like you need to work hard to improve. You, it's like you feel like you're done com improving. And when you say that someone is complacent, that will be a more negative thing then. Like you're so complacent, you don't want to get better at anything. And then stagnant, um, that's also a negative word here, and if you are stagnant, you are not doing anything. You are you are not progressing. Okay, so those are two. Lazy and stagnant. Yeah, yeah, uh huh, yeah. So things things can be stag can become stagnant if you are lazy. If you if you don't work hard at anything or you don't try to do anything new. Things can be stagnant. Things can just stop moving. I always think about the image that I have in my mind when I think about stagnant. Things that are not moving. You're not progressing. You're not moving forward at all. So if, uh, here, if you shy away from something, in this case change, shy away from change, if you shy away from something or someone, you are going away from it. You are avoiding it. So mentally strong people here, they do not shy away. They do not avoid change at all. They embrace change. Now embrace here has two meanings. One meaning is physical. Um, if you embrace someone, it's kind of like hugging someone. 
but men, uh, in a not physical sense, if you embrace change, that just means you welcome change, or you are not afraid of change. You um, you yeah. are not and going to avoid change. Satisfied for change. Maybe. Yeah, you're you're satisfied with change. Uh huh. You're happy to have change. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have a big fear of the unknown. So and that can keep them from doing things or trying new things. So uh, mentally strong people, even if there's a lot of uncertain things, <laughs> we have a lot of double people today. Oh, no, we don't. We have more in our class. Hi, more. Yes, hi. Hi, good to see you. Mm -hmm. We're talking about mentally strong people and how they are not afraid of change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Has any... Has anyone in this class had an experience where you have had an option to do something that could be really cool, but it had a lot of change involved in it? Good, good change, yeah? Any kind of change. Maybe you have an opportunity to, um, to become very successful, but that opportunity has changed that comes with it. If you do it, things will change a lot. Uh, in, in the, in the mid-twenties, when I watched the Russian film, uh, my, my life changed. I have, I have, like, oh. yes, I have interest in Ru Russian, and <laughs> that, <laughs> that was the beginning of my, my big change of, of, in my life, of my life. Okay, you did make a lot of life changes moving to Russia. Yes. Yeah. Until and then, I, I have no interest. I have no interest in Russia. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you, you, have, you did not shy away from change. You saw something that you were interested in, and yes. in, in um, being interested in Russian, you went to Russia and you made change so that you could explore that interest some more. Yes. So you you are an example of someone who did not shy away from change. Good? Mm. <laughs> mm. I am quite shy. Um, I'm a, I am quite shy in changing. Mm. But I don't know how to say Maybe in your in your day to day regular normal routine, you're not so so much interested in change. Yes, I I I I completely I don't uh, I don't expect uh, any change. I I. Oh, we lost Yuki. <laughs> oh no, he he's he is gone. He changed. Maybe he changed <laughs> to a different <laughs> class. <laughs> <laughs> Good question for him. <laughs> Yuki yeah. just shied away from some change. Yeah. Good answer. <laughs> Good. Okay. Anybody else? Has anyone else had an experience where they they have had to change a lot in order to have a new opportunity or have some new success? Yes, I decided to learn English. Okay, yeah, that's One a big change. Ago. Uh huh. Because I couldn't speak, so. Yeah, so you made a lot of changes. Uh huh. Good. Uh -huh. You did not shy away from change. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, learning to change and change in my life. <laughs> I joined the class. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Last uh, maybe two months, uh, and uh, I spent. Uh, Sometimes uh, uh, on word link, and uh, uh, I uh, changed my uh, work time. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do my work uh, at evening. Maybe I have to work uh, uh, at night, <laughs> but it's okay. I like it. <laughs> okay, you have a flexible schedule, so you were able to change it, so you could fit in some English classes, huh? Yeah. yeah. Yes, learning, yes, a, learning new a new language definitely, definitely can be um, a, change a change that a lot of people, lot of people don't want to, to, make. to make. They think, okay, okay that's too hard, I won't, I won't do it, do but um, you for you guys, you have all changed in a way, in a way uh, through, learning through learning English, through taking these classes. So you did, so not, you did not shy away from it. 
Okay. Um, um, we only have about one minute, minute left. Um, um, if there's, more, there's more. Of course, there's, of course we have ten more things on, on this list, but that's okay. I always talk too much, and then we don't get to all of them. But you can look at the rest of them. There are other things. Other things basically, basically mentally strong people don't worry about how other people see them. They don't worry about what other people think. They're not. They're not afraid of new things. Some of these are related to the first three that we talked about here. We have they don't they well don't well on the past number seven seven we talked a little bit about dwelling on things thinking thinking too much about, about things, things that, that happened that you can't, you can't control, control you can't change, change the past but you well on well it. on it you uh, you uh, kind of a waste your, of time. your voice uh, uh, difference uh. <laughs> it's so <a> poetic. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. I, I hear many noises from your your sound. It's robotic, your voice, Andre. Oh, okay, okay. okay. I, was a robot. I changed, I changed it into a robot. A robot. Uh, I was not I was afraid, afraid, afraid of changing it to a robot. robot. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. You can go on here and uh, like recording. You will see what. Okay, okay. okay. I'll, I'll listen I'll to the recording. recording. I then. thought uh, my computer is wrong, but uh, it's. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> That was strange. Yes, I, I, I transformed, I transformed into, into a robot, robot for a second. For a second. Um, yeah, um, so the, yeah, you can see, can see um, um, his main, main points. points. Uh, uh, not, worrying. not worrying. Basically, it's basically it's not being not afraid, afraid to afraid try to try new things. things. Not, not being not afraid, afraid of change. change. Not, not being worried, being worried about, about other people. Other people. Not uh, uh, not being not complacent, being complacent. Keeping, keeping work, keeping, keeping with your goals, your goals keeping up with your goals, goals working, working, not giving not up. Giving Those up. are all things, things that successful, that successful people, do, people do, mentally strong people do, people do and then and the, the opposite, opposite of them will be in this article, article too. So you can look at those, um, but that was a good start on the article. You can um, think about different examples in your own life or people that you've read about, famous people that are very successful, and see, do they fit into that article? Is that... Do they have the same kind of characteristics? So I think those kinds of articles are pretty interesting. So you can uh, learn some more words uh, that you can use in business English as well. Uh, but I need to let you guys go. Um, I have, I think I have three, two or three classes tomorrow, so you can check those out. I think one of them is role play, which is my favorite. So I hope to see you guys then, and um, I hope you have a good day. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.